Welcome back to Dicebreaker, where today we are going to be live streaming uh, an audience play along version of Thousand Year Old Vampire by Tim Hutchings, one of the most beautiful RPG books ever created, as told by me on another video on youtube.com forward slash Dicebreaker. Uh, I'm joined by the fantastic Johnny Chiadini. How are you doing, Dad? I'm very well. How are you, Sam? Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. We're going to be some spooky old vampires. Um, so for anyone yes. who's not aware, uh, and just to fill you all in, Thousand Year Old Vampire is a solo journaling RPG that can be played as a group, but you all play as the same character, essentially. Um, but we are going to be playing as, you guessed it, a Thousand Year Old Vampire, or rather a character in history who has been turned into a vampire and then charting out their life as they go through the centuries and centuries of their, of their death essentially um mapping out all of the uh the strange fragile allegiances that they make along the way the enemies that they have the people they fall in love with the terrible things that they do um and we're going to be mapping it out with you chat because you are also going to be playing along with us we're going to be asking you for um help as we read out the prompts because this is a prompt powered rpg as you can see, it is absolutely full of them. Uh, this game takes a, a note from the sort of choose-your-own-adventure style, um, like fighting fantasy style books, where you'll be turning to certain pages to see what happened next. Uh, but to, to do that, we're going to be rolling dice. And if we come to a new page, we'll read the first one. But if we come to a page that we've already seen before, we'll read the next one down the line, and so on and so forth. But we're going to be using those prompts to make a fun story. And uh, I, I suppose it's time that we introduce our character, Johnny. Yeah. So we're going to be playing as Isadora, um, a marauder of the Cyclades archipelago and dreaded Grecian pirate in the year 1100 BC ish. Uh, we... I'm going to give chat one guess as to who came up with this vampire. <laughs> was it me or was it Wheels? <laughs> uh, Isadora is a catastrophically bisexual Grecian pirate. <laughs> who um, captains an entire fleet of, of women pirates who go out and capture high-up men and ransom them back to their uh, their higher-ups for more money. Uh, she's cool as hell. Uh, joining her on this voyage, uh, we've got three mortal characters. We have Sappho, the second-in-command and fearsome negotiator. She has seen us accrue great wealth from our ransoms, where I would always choose to fight my way out of situations. She often saves our skin with a silver tongue. Uh, we have... Astraea, a young firebrand in my crew. She thinks she has what it takes to usurp me from the crown of shields that I've made for myself. I need to keep my eyes on this one. And we have Aeolus, a Spartan general that we have captured in one of our raids. He's crude and unkind and has been chained to the mast of our ship. Um, then we have... My god, is he handsome. <laughs> That's right, Johnny is editing this document too. Um, we've also got three resources. We have our ship, the Gorgon, a bronze armoured uh, enveloped trireme. Um, or armour enveloped, sorry, not armoured enveloped. That's, that's, that's two words that don't go together. Um, we have a throne of broken shields that we sit upon. We have Toto meowing in the background because he's being a baby. <laughs> Toto, come here. Toto, stop being a baby. Come here. Um, Watson's pouring at the door to get out classic. so it's going well already it's, it's an animal stream uh, and then of course we have our bloodthirsty crew themselves for our resources as for skills Johnny what have we got yep we've got martial discipline because you know dread pirate mm. obviously um, we have to be pretty handy with um, some arms in order to do that Absolutely. we've got uh, captain of the ship rank is important obviously as is the respect of the crew which hopefully we command but then we'll see uh, and also we've got um, Bacchanalian, 
which is basically the skill of morale boosting. We know how to party. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the wine and song element of leadership, which, as any ancient Greek catastrophically bisexual pirate will tell you, <laughs> is a vitally important skill. Talking of being catastrophically bisexual, uh, Ifa Brennan has done a super chat to say, catastrophically bisexual, can I put that on a t-shirt? <laughs> or maybe we yeah. should. Um, <laughs> but Everyone can. Yeah, exactly. We don't, you know. We don't we own don't, two words. We don't. Yeah, exactly. Right, so the way that this game works is we're going to be writing down experiences. Uh, experiences are one sentence descriptors of a thing that happened. And each one is going to be put into a memory slot. So our brain... Our fragile human brain can hold but five memories, which can hold but three experiences. Um, So as we go through life, we will literally run out of space in our memory and have to forget things along the way. We could forget Mm -hmm. like small events that happened, or we could literally forget who we are, what we do, people that we loved. All kinds of things could just fall uh, at the wayside. To Mm. help us with that, we can make... A diary. We can have one diary, which can hold four memories. Uh, and a diary is a physical object. Our vampire will always choose for... Well, will always choose to believe whatever is in there, basically. So whatever is in the diary, they will, they will see as fact. But not only that, it's a physical object. Which means if we lose it, then we've lost all of, of our memories of a thing that happened, which is bad. Mm. You know, most people would say that's bad. Uh, but let's look at the five experiences slash memories. Come on, then. Sit on my lap. Come on. You're being a big baby. Come on. I've, I've increased the font size just so uh, chat has an easier time of reading Excellent. it, by the way. Yeah, let us know if um, let us know if, uh, if if anyone's having trouble reading. And I can always you know increase contrast mm-hmm. and stuff like that or whatever. Tasty Crow Inc. is having difficulty being jealous of your bed set. <laughs> it's a nice one. I should probably wash it, to be honest, because... Uh, it needs one, but there you go. But that would get rid of all the seasoning. <laughs> um, uh, so Zhivko Yakimov says, isn't 1100 BC too far back? As I said, we are going to be a thousand year old vampire. So don't worry, we'll go through all kinds of different things happening. We're going to go nice and early. So we've got plenty of time uh, to catch up with. Uh, so let's go. Yeah, so we are Isadora, Marauder of the Cyclades Archipelago and dreaded Grecian pirate. Um the second experience that we have here, Sappho squeezes us out of death's grasp one more time, accepting a contract to destroy an Athenian warship in exchange for forgiveness from one of the pirate kings of the island. So that's definitely going to come back to bite us. Um, Just going to pause you there for a quick super chat. Um, Sophie Bond has very kindly done a super chat saying, here's a dono for Johnny for being amazing, authentic, and wearing a superb hoodie. Love to wheels too, I suppose. <sighs> Winky face. Ha, Sophie. Ha. Thank you. This is, uh, the RSPB has started churning out incredible clothing. So I thought, yeah, I'll buy myself a, a woodpecker hoodie. <laughs> uh, Ifa uh, Brennan has done another super chat to say, Johnny. Ew. <laughs> so it's uh, swings and roundabouts, really. Yeah, on the, look, on the know, super chats for me. You today. win some, you lose some, Johnny. Mm. And everyone's very happy with Toto in yes, the. Um, they always are in the chat when, when this big baby, when this big baby comes to say hello. Look at him, mm. honestly. Ooh. Right, should we do? Let's do memory three. Is it memory? Th- is this a memory? Yeah, memory three. Oh, experience mem- okay. one is uh, okay. The first time uh, it fell to me to lift the spirits of the crew after a disastrous loss. Buffeted by harsh seas on the way home from a successful raid, what should have been a glorious revelry turned into a somber memorial for the drowned. Oh no, Johnny. It got a bit sad. Yes. Is that what happens when you yes. try and uh, lift spirits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You start when, singing a frightening when I'm writing, song. <laughs> when I'm writing, you can, be, you can be sure of two things. Sadness and M-dashes. Because <laughs> I love them. Well, we've only got one sentence for each experience, so... Okay. Um, oh, I did. I did two for memory four. Yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, um, memory four is Astraea's blade sweeping downward and clattering against the haft of a spear thrust cruelly toward my chest, turning the point aside and saving my life. I am still trying to make sense of her wolfish grin. Uh, and then the fifth one, Johnny. Go ahead. Uh, oh, I haven't read this one yet. The dread pirate Hippatios cuts me down in combat. The first man to fell me, slicing half my left arm clean off. Oof. As I lay fallen, he d- bespose his gift bestows his gift upon me, and I awaken a monster. We have a lot of super oh my chats word. right now. Goodness me. 
Uh, so Ifa Brown oh, has done another super chat to say that was to the seasoning comment, <laughs> Pat, which bad. is entirely fair. Bad. Seasoning on, on bedding is a horrible thing to mention. Hello, I'm Duke Ken has uh, done a customary super chat of a Shiba Inu grinning and going like this. Like, <laughs> um, oh, wow, it's it's still going. Oh, wow. uh, luxury gay space communist has done a very generous super chat. Thank you very much. Um, saying very much love to my favorite lovely boys. Glad to hear you're doing better, Johnny. And obligatory love for the pink jumper wheels. It is a really good look. It's lovely. I you love pull it. it off. I can't pull off A pastel colours or B light colours like that. Oh, but you mwah. rubbish. Um, you can definitely pull off a pink hoodie. Especially seeing mm. as we look exactly the same. <laughs> Spun off C has done a super chat to say, not sure how much I'll be able to see of this due to storms, but hope you lovely pair have an awesome day. We hope you have um a a, a very safe non storm bothered time, yeah. Spun off C. Uh, you can always watch this on catch up, obviously. So, um, uh, yes, uh, stay safe and dry. Matthew K has done a super chat, goodness <laughs> me, saying, I've been subscribed from almost day one, but this is my first live. So, hi, guys, love what you do. Hello, Matthew K. Oh, We're you, glad you could finally join us live. Um, and William Adam McDuff has uh, done a super chat, say, catastrophically bisexual and using a spear. Hello, sailor. <laughs> there you go. So uh, with that last uh, experience, we have our last character, who is not a mortal, but an immortal. This is the vampire who cursed us. The dread pirate Hippathios, most feared death dealer of the Aegean and captain of the Broken Skull. He's very edgy. Like, he's he's got some real daddy issues. Very handsome. <laughs> Look, everyone in this story is incredibly attractive. We should just let that be known. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's still worth pointing out. <laughs> Like, obviously, everyone's got eyes. They can see that Wheels is a devilishly handsome man. Johnny. But does it hurt for me to point it out? No. <laughs> well, it doesn't hurt for me so... to point out how handsome you are, then, Johnny. Stop it. These, these good genes Hapathios. have come from somewhere. Definitely handsome. <laughs> oh, right. Dear. So, as I said, the way this game works is we're going to start a prompt one, which is this one right here. Toto, I swear to God, boy. Um, we're going to start a prompt one. We're going to read it out. We're going to answer the questions and do what it tells us to do. Um, and then once we're done with that, after every prompt we've done, we roll a d10 and a d6. Um, and then we subtract the result of the d6 from the result of the d10, I believe. Uh, and that will give us either a positive or negative number, which will send us forward or backwards in the book to a new prompt. And that's how it works. And they can play like that. So we're going to be asking for your input on the prompts chat. So please let us know all your best ideas. But the first one for you is... In your blood hunger, you destroy someone close to you. Kill a mortal character. Create a mortal of none are available. Take the skill, bloodthirsty. Whoa! Yeah, this game doesn't mess around. Straight out the game. Rimini. So who dies, okay. chat? Um, so yeah, who dies? We take, the, Sappho, we take the skill, bloodthirsty, Australia straight away. Or Aeolus. Uh, Liam Oliver has done a super chat saying, Johnny, I have a tavern in my city named after you. I'm assuming that this is, um, I'm assuming this is a, a fictional tavern. <laughs> there isn't actually a pub named after Oh, me. I, I, I hope there is. there is. I will, I will never recover. Like my head will swell to bursting. Um, wow, that's my, that is my bucket list dream. I had to have a pub named after me. <laughs> there we go. You never um, knew, but here it is. Everyone okay, is very much saying, against the idea of Sappho being killed. Yes. Okay. Oh, we need to show the characters again. Here we are. So we've got Sappho, the second in command. Astraea, a young firebrand in my crew, who thinks they have what it takes to desert me. Oh, that sounds like quite a prominent one. Uh, and Aeolus, a Spartan general who we captured in our raids. What do you reckon, chat? A lot of people saying Astraea should die. Yeah. Astraea had it coming. I mean, which sort of makes sense in that kind of I suspect them kind of way. Well, it also, that's kind of our, uh, it's also our meal ticket, remember? This is how we make money. We capture generals and we ransom them back. Yeah. But everyone wants us to kill Australia. So what happens, Johnny? Okay. So so, so when we write a new experience, um, uh -huh. we have to add a new bullet point to a memory. Or if there are none that apply or we've run out of room, we then have to strike out an old memory to replace it with a new one. So we would. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we have to like further the thing. So we could, for example, have um, uh, da, 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 da. 
Estrella's blade sweeping downward, for example. We could further that with uh, killing Estrella, for example. Okay, should we do that? Yeah, How, what happens? Let me know. Okay. So I'm going to write. I'm going to write now. Okay. Whilst you're doing that, whilst you're thinking, I'm just going to read out some super chats that we've just got through. Riley says, my first ever Dicebreaker live stream, blessed with both vampires and Toto the cat. Today is a good day indeed. It's a good day to have you in the chat with us, really. Uh, and then Titan Uranus says, Aeolus would be deliciously tragic, says Titan. <laughs> oh, and Dennis Gunther says, hey, guys, thanks a lot for all your content. Going to have my very first D&D &D session zero on Saturday. And we'll be playing Betrayal with newbies on Sunday. Lots of love from Cambodia and wish you a great time. Thank you so much, Dennis, for that super chat. And thank you for joining us. And I'm going to slowly read this out as Johnny types it. Her blood courses into my mouth uh -oh, with such uh -oh, force. That's, now it's scary. It's like I'm being chased through a corridor. <laughs> uh, Her blood courses into my mouth with such force that it's all my throat can do to keep up with the flow. I taste iron. The heat is dizzying. No wonder she had such passion. Oh, I don't like that last that last bit. <sighs> Got to be poetic. I think we we should keep these. I uh, know. Yeah. I know they need to be shorter. No, I mean they they should oh, be. So, yeah, all right. They're not the sub point. Heat is dizzying. Passion or terror? Oh, she can no longer tell. The terror. There we go. Oh, oh my word, Johnny. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, which means Estrella is dead, so we're going to strike her out. Bye. Uh, which is format, is it? <laughs> which one is it? Maybe format. Let me just find what the... Uh... Alt-Shift-5, of course. What else would it be? Alt-Shift-5. There we go. Estrella has been stricken. Stricken from the memory books. <laughs> Which means it's time to roll some dice. This is this is one of the most intimidating things I think I've ever done. What live? I get so nervous when I'm writing. Oh, Johnny! And now we're doing it live on the internet. It's a big deal. Don't worry, we'll take them in turns. Okay, here we go. Good fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to open a drink very shortly. <laughs> right, eight minus two is six, so we're going to go to prompt seven. So uh, one plus six equals seven. So we go to that prompt, and the prompt is chat. Your body manifests some trait related to the vampire that created you. How do you become more like them and then create a skill that reflects this? Ooh. Let us... All right, so give us some skill ideas, chat. Give us some skill ideas. Uh, we have started to uh, to resemble the dread pirate Hypatheos. Or Hypatheos. Um, tell us how. Tell us how. Hmm. Teresa says, no, Johnny, you're doing great. Doing great. We're all doing great. Everyone's doing fantastic. You're all yeah. incredible. <laughs> Christian Duffield says, hypnosis of the eyes, which is quite cool. Ooh. Red eyes as well, furthering their point. Which I think, yeah, whatever Hypatios <laughs> has, it will be edgy, you know? <laughs> Gorilla toes. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Bradley, I like the way you think. <laughs> Sharp knife-like nails, penchant for cutting off arms, yeah. even more handsome. <laughs> Ute, Ute Scoot says hypnosis sounds great. That's two people for hypnosis. How do people feel about hypnotically red eyes? Yeah, I like that. Or a hooked claw, says Christopher Needham, to replace our arm. Oh, if we got some kind of prosthetic over it, it would start growing over it. I didn't. I forgot to mention our mark. So a mark is something that is inhumanly odd and wounding on you. Oh, I feel like uh, my arm still seeks to grow anew, like the many-headed Hydra. I make cuts to keep it human in appearance. It's one thing that we have to hide from others, otherwise they'll know that we are not immortal. A wolf. You effectively belly perform button. surgery on yourself. You what, sorry. You you're effectively performing surgery. Yeah, on essentially, to try and keep it look keep it looking like we haven't healed. Yeah, let's have a drink. <laughs> a little bit. All right, yeah, whilst yeah, we're yeah. here, a bit of a mature content warning on this stream. <laughs> yeah, evidently. Guy needed that mature content warning. Yeah, Kieran says hypnotic red eyes suits a hopeless bi hopelessly bisexual vampire. Let's do it. it. does. Okay, so skills. We are going to say hypnosis. And then what's, for our entry. What's drink for cheers? Is it WAPA? No. Hmm? What's the Greek for cheers? Uh, 
I'm waiting. I have to say cheers in Greek. Greek lessons. Greek lessons. You don't take out a new Greek lesson just to learn how to say cheers. <laughs> I'm curious. Got this. Oh, Toto, I'm trying to write, on. boy. Come on. There we go. Right. Um... Sinigathas. Sinigathas. Opa, says Jeremy Siegel. Apparently it's Opa. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm. I see myself. That's all Greek tonight. Reflection of bronze. Uh, of bronze. Shielding. I'm not looking. And then I'll look and read it out. Hmm. Veronica Matrix says Yamas would be more accurate for a tavern setting, I think. Moonchild says Oprah is grandma in German. <laughs> grandma! Oh, <okay. laughs> Unperceptive Paladin has just done a super chat saying, finally caught a stream. On solo RPGs, Johnny mentioned on the pod that Jane from Oxbox is writing a grimoire through one. I'd love to know the system she's using. It is called... Oh, is this the one that was in that bundle? Sigils in yes. the Dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's the one. Yeah, she told me about it where she was basically... Because obviously if you're, you, know, you follow the Oxventure, you'll know that Prudence killed her warlock mentor years ago. And so she started writing this grimoire as if she was working on it then. And she was building up to build like the, the big spell to do it. And roll, and I think she got a nature prompt, so she accidentally built like a tree nuke. <laughs> so yeah, I was I was so delighted when Jane actually sort of took up that challenge. I was like, here, there's an interesting thing. I wonder if Prudence would do it, or I wonder if you would do it as Prudence. Um, and that's all it took. She was like, yeah, yeah, I'm in. Here we go. Here you go, Johnny. Read them out. I see myself in the reflection of the bronze shielding on our ship. His face intertwined with mine. I shield my eyes with hoods and shadows to hide my shame. That's very good. Whenever it's about him, it's got to be edgy. Guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Have you got any dice with you, Johnny, or shall I carry on rolling? Oh, uh, what dice do we uh, need? A D10 and a D6. Yeah, we've got that covered. Give us a roll, and then just subtract the 6 from the 10. Oh, okay. That is 9. 9, blimey. Okay, well, we're currently on 7, so we are moving on to prompt 16. Quick maths. <laughs> Ready, chat? Here's your next prompt. Some mortals have banded together to hunt you, well-armed and wise to your tricks. How do you defeat or evade them? Create a mortal hunter related to one of your checked skills, and then check a skill. Wow. Right, well, we haven't checked a skill yet, so I guess we'll check a skill and then create a mortal hunter related to it. Okay. So... Oh, and another super chat here from Josh Bunton, who says, thank you for the entertainment, even if brief, on my 600-mile drive home. Josh, where are you, the moon? A... What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you make the big announcement from NASA? <laughs> Moon's wet. <laughs> Backing up Moppet and Buck. Uh, Moppet and Buck? <laughs> I liked it. It was a good spoonerism. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Sounds like a comedy duo from the 70s. Okay. Um, so, we need to check a skill. So, our skills are Martial Discipline, which is a, an obvious one, Captain of the Ship, yep. Bacchanalian, Bloodthirsty, and Hypnosis. So, we have to. I'm going to say we have to use one of these skills to evade them. Um, okay. But that is also... It's going to inform what kind of person that we're dealing with is. Whilst, whilst you're thinking about that chat, so keep a, keep a lookout for... Uh, for which skill they want us to use, Johnny. That's what I'm asking here in yep. the chat. So give us a... What skill are we using? using? I'm going to look up some ancient Greek names. I've got a little list here, okay. as you can see. Very exciting. Uh, give me a letter, Johnny. Moppet and, Moppet and Buck. <laughs> uh, an incredible crime-fighting duo. What <laughs> um, <Or Petios. laughs> What do you want me to a give letter. you? Letter. Letter. Uh, Q. Q. All right. Q names. I've uh, got no Q names, I'm afraid. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, V. v. Uh, Thomas Tomasi asks, what is Bacchanalian? That is like rabble-rousing. It's like um, wine and song and, and keeping your um, your crew happy, bucking up their spirits. Uh, people are saying... 
captain of the ship. Captain of the ship. Couple of shouts for hypnosis. More for Captain of the Ship. If it's Captain of the, Captain ship, of the ship, should we say that somebody like uh, yeah. snuck their way into our crew? Um, that could work. That'd be quite cool. People are saying make them a privateer. Oh, or yeah, maybe would know the layout, possibly hidden or secret idea, uh, secret areas to hide in. Maybe they're a naval general or an Ooh. admiral if you will <laughs> um uh captain of the ship you tell your crew the vampire hunters are trying to steal your gold somebody suggested it would be the um the crew of the other ship the the crew of the the captured generals ship. oh so maybe it's like his second in like, command they're trying to, yeah they're trying to make a rescue oh that's attempt. cool do you want to write that sure. okay so his name is vasilis vasilis v a s i l i s Okay. So I will make uh, the mortal character, and then if you want to write our uh, experience, which I'm guessing will go under um, the uh, the, we... the one where we captured him or whatever. Yeah. yeah which yeah. I don't know if we have, you know. We don't. We don't have it. Okay, well, you'll either have to expand on one of the ones we already have, or we'll have to get rid of a memory. In the meantime, though, I'll write okay. this character up. So... Um... Vasilis. So he's a Spartan, isn't he? Yeah. What is the name of a high up? I'm gonna I'm gonna search Greek military ranks. Okay. And see what goes. Yeah, please do. Room. Okay. So we I reckon we could either forget. We could forget lifting the spirits of the crew. We could forget. Astraea entirely having eaten her. That's true. She's done. But I like, I do like that memory though. We can put it in a diary if you want. Okay. Make a diary. Let's do that. That's a good way of showing off what a diary okay, is. So we literally, uh, we make a new. So wait, hold on. This is heading two, I guess. Yeah. So make a new heading. It's our diary. We're going to do a brief description of, um, oh, it should be like 20. <laughs> we've, we've upped the text size quite a lot. Hold on. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. 20. There we go. Um, we want to do a brief description of um, what it looks like, like, like how we, like, is it a pottery or is it, uh, you know, like a leather bound um, oh. collection of scrappy bits of paper? Yeah, Polymark would be good, actually. Let's call him a Polymark. Um, uh, yeah, what if it was just like a scrap of like bits of, of paper, but wrapped up tightly in a like a, an animal skin to protect it from sea spray? Write it down, my friend. Write it down. Okay, where does it live? Uh, just underneath the word diary. And then, and diary. then we'll, we'll put that memory of uh, Australia okay. underneath it. Uh, a bundle of uh, scraps and uh, uh, pages swaddled in a contents of a prying spray. Cool. That so number four memory is open for you now. Great. <laughs> Alex Starslayer in the chat has just gone scrolls. <laughs> Big fan of scrolls in the chat. <laughs> scrolls. <laughs> okay. Was it not still animal skin scrolls? Asks Raz Grizz. It's, poss it's entirely possible. I mean, I think it's safe to say we're going to run into a few anachronisms in go. this game about being a it's vampire. It's fine. I fixed it. Um, okay. <laughs> Does it just say Paper? scrolls? <laughs> Paper? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, my command. The crew stops rowing and stands uh, with arms ready, waiting for the... Was it a polymarsh? Polymarsh, yeah. 
So for your descriptor here, Vasilis, Spartan Polymark, and second in command to our captive Aeolus. He barks like a dog and thinks like a skunk. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, ah, la la la. Where, where's it gone? Oh. Uh, and here's. Uh, it's, uh... <laughs> what does a kunk think of? Yeah, all right, Titan. I missed the S. <laughs> There's going to be typey bits. Don't worry. Cry, uh, cry out. To, what's his name again? Um, Aeolus. Uh, I'm gonna read this very slowly. At my command, the crew stops rowing and stands with arms at the ready, waiting for the impertinent Polymark and his snivelling curs to pull alongside our trireme. They cry out to Aeolus like children for their mother's teat. <laughs> Vasilis gives his name. One of the last sentences he'll ever speak, no doubt. Oh, <laughs> huge, Johnny. Oof. Made you say tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put he hunts us at the end of Vasilis's character description. All right. Yeah. What we can do as well, by the way, chat, because we'll we'll likely not get very far in this game. But if anyone fancies picking up this RPG, we could always just release this Google Doc. Um, yeah. So then you can just carry on your adventures yourselves, which would be pretty exciting. So, let's do a little dice roll. Uh, that is three minus six. So we're going to go minus <laughs> three. You're right there. Sorry, sorry, Ronnie typed. Ah, the adult version of booby. <laughs> Completely accurate. <laughs> Teet is the adult version of Booby. <laughs> that really got me. Christ. That really, really got me. Okay, this is an interesting one. Generations of the same family serve you. This line starts with any living mortal character or from the descendants of a dead mortal character. What bizarre rituals do they tie to their servitude? Lose a resource... And create a servitors of the lineage resource. Ooh, very interesting one. Yeah. Right. So our resources here. Uh, we have the ship, the throne, and the bloodthirsty crew. Okay. So maybe this crew has become less of a like paid organization and more of a mind thrall. You know. Yeah. 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 So if we if we bang that one off, so yep. what was it? Shift Alt Five. Is it? Yeah, there we go. So bloodthirsty crew. Is that how you do yeah. it? Yeah. Well, there's a super chat, but I can't read it because it's I I I'll feel very self conscious if I have to. Uh, so, well, please. East Brennan says, please write a book, Johnny. <laughs> Thank you for that. Super no, chat. you can't make me. There we go. <laughs> we write things. We're just not allowed to talk about them. <laughs> we're not allowed. We're not allowed to talk about them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we have a few suggestions here Alex Simpkins says descended of Sappho um, which depends if Sappho has had children I mean this is a, the, a for those who are not aware of Sappho the, the, the actual Grecian character like mother of all lesbians <laughs> um, it's true Emma Benton uh, asks how do we always end up in cults <laughs> I don't know Emma we're a vampire everyone's gonna run into a cult-like problem at some point as a vampire yeah oh raspberries it's not it's not um it's not imposter syndrome like I've, I've thought about writing a book and stuff but like i do i do write things for myself it's just literally as part of the terms of my contract i can't talk about them so that because it would be seen to be giving coverage to those things yeah, we we're not not and talking about that leveraging because trust our, me <laughs> leveraging our platform unfairly basically okay i'm gonna but thank you for your concern i'm gonna add to our um our first memory here of us um so here we go mark smith asks wtf is this <laughs> welcome aboard mark thanks smith. mark <laughs> we are playing 
a thousand year old vampire. This is a journaling RPG. It's normally played solo, but there are multiplayer rules, which is why we are playing with you. We have made um, uh, a vampire who currently is hanging out in ancient Greece, um, leading a crew of marauders. Um, and we roll dice to get writing prompts and basically construct new memories um, as we, you know, continue being a vampire, sort of living our, our little weird undead feast on uh, the blood of our enemies sort of life. But the thing is, while we're a vampire and that's incredibly powerful, the squishy human brain can only hold so many memories. So as you'll sort of see here, we do have a list of memories. Wheels is working on one right now. But we've had to strike some from the record because we haven't got room to remember them. So we've written some down as diaries. Some will just be lost to time and deleted cruelly as if they never existed. Uh, but generally speaking, we're having a jolly old time deciding uh, what happens to um, to our lovely disastrously bisexual vampire. Um, Ignis has just done a super chat saying, well, Hurricane just stole my power, so I guess I'll watch this on catch up. Have fun being vamps. Hope the power comes back on soon, Ignis. That sounds rubbish. Yeah. Um, and uh, Titan Uranus uh, <laughs> has done a super chat to say, is that the same as how Wheels isn't allowed to mention his Twitch stream? Uh, well, Wheels can't can't answer that question. <laughs> Titan. But yes. <laughs> boy. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, oh, and Cameron Murray has done a super chat to say, Hey guys, loving the stream and also love the Blades in the Dark stream. Any plans to continue it? Can't wait to play it. I can see us playing Blades again in the future. Oh, sure, Why not? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Harry Gray says, Does your contract also stop you from having a pub named after you? I sincerely hope not. I will I will see. I will read up on uh, on my contract. And if the answer is yes, I'll quit in the morning. <laughs> oh, well. You're up, Pretty Johnny. sure I can have a pub named after me. Memories Everything. 1. Or memory one, sorry. Experience two. Oh, good lord. Tuesday Forever says you use blood magic to create clones of Astraea. They each grow up in your service until you kill them at the moment of their inevitable betrayal. Oh my god, that was a lot better than our idea. <laughs> that is amazing. I love that. Kind of like you, like you reap what you yeah. sow, but you have to pick the moment of the reaping mm. lest you be overwhelmed. Okay, here we go. Right, wheels is done. This crew that once stuck by my side only for coin and glory now serve me against their will. Generations of this sickly family pour in to join my ranks. They attempt to suck sup, sorry, they attempt to sup from the veins of our fallen to imitate me, but they cannot stomach it. Oh man. <laughs> Look. You're just there being like <laughs> <laughs> well, like, bleh, bleh, bleh. Oh, I don't like it, blood. boss. <laughs> Goodness me! Things get dark in this game quick. <laughs> they do. Would you like to roll some dice, Johnny? I'd love to. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Six minus one. No, one minus six is minus oh, five, wow. which puts us at eight. <clears throat> Ian K. Anderson says we do love more Blades in the Dark what about Band of Blades we actually talk about Band of Blades on this week's yes. podcast which will be out tomorrow yes, we do tune in live tomorrow mm. okay you are recognised for what you are by another creature like yourself create an immortal character lose a resource and gain a skill what did you lose okay. to them oh dear <laughs> Ofer Brennan has done a super chat to say wait, why can't you mention things <laughs> okay, so it's it's, actually, it's fine to talk about why we can't mention things basically um, like it's a very standard thing when you work in a media organisation um, that uh, what, what we create while we work here is the intellectual property of the company so um, you know, we, we I, I couldn't just start my own channel tomorrow and, and make the exact same stuff. Uh, or rather, what I couldn't do is start my own channel while working here and make the exact same stuff and expect to profit off it. So when we do make stuff, it A, has to be something that isn't in direct competition with what we already do. So we can't do uh, board game coverage outside of, outside of Dicebreaker. Um, but also, we're, like, we're allowed to seek permission to do outside projects like... For example, if it were streaming or writing games and putting those online, 
We are allowed to seek permission for that and then do it if we're approved. However, we're not allowed to talk about it at work or rather on streams like this, because that would be using our platform to promote our own work for personal gain. So that's that's the reason we aren't basically aren't allowed to talk about our yeah, outside projects. It's a project. question of journalistic while, integrity while on as well, right? Because like, how can you trust our opinions yeah. if, if we're like, oh, you should buy this RPG? Also, I made it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I for us, don't you own Dicebreaker? No, no, we do not. No, <laughs> um, no we we do not own Dicebreaker. We we work for a company. Uh, thanks, Legal Dad. You're welcome, Andrew Gatsby. <laughs> uh, we work for Repop, which owns. Um, Brands like uh, Eurogamer and VG247 and Rock Paper Shotgun and Dicebreaker. Mm -hmm. So uh, they own it. We work for it. Johnny uh, does own me, though. He is. I do. He's my boss. <laughs> there we go. Diecast model idiot says, "Hold on, we can trust your opinions." News to me. I mean, <laughs> we can't vouch for the quality of our opinions, yeah. but you, you, you know, they're not basically. <laughs> the important thing is that we do have journalistic integrity. Yes. So there we go. Uh, Hatronoth has done a super chat saying coming next week seven times DB chat derailed Johnny <laughs> <laughs> wait a sec Johnny did you know you have an IMDB page no what Gaius no let's explore that some other time let's, let's... <laughs> anyway um, so to, to recap okay. because a lot happened there <laughs> um, you are recognized for what you are by another creature like yourself create an immortal character Lose a resource and gain a skill. What did you lose to them? So I'm guessing this is another vampire pirate. It seems like there's a lot of vampire pirates rocking around the Aegean. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, buddy. <laughs> Johnny Keardini is an actor known for the Oxventurers Guild, literally everyone else in the world, outside extra and Eurogamer. <laughs> <laughs> You're an actor. I thought you were a real person, Johnny. Have you been yeah, pre pretending surprise. to be my friend and colleague this whole time? <laughs> We've got a super chat here from Leo Oops. who says, how are you going to implement contract NDAs and disputes into this vampire's journal? <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Yeah, done. Yeah, that's that's what's happening. Okay. Uh, somebody finds so out I'm a vampire, but I asked them to sign a non-disclosure agreement, so it's all fine. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Everyone would Remind like us me. to lose the ship, Johnny. Okay. Which is quite a big deal, but if that's what the chat done. wants. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Strike it out. Stricken. But we have gained um, a skill. Okay. So they took something from us, uh, but we managed to get something back. Former Captain <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm gonna pick a pick a, a letter, and I'll find a name for our new immortal. Okay. Uh. Oh, people are saying lose the throne, not the ship. Okay. That's fine. I don't know, let's see. So no ship, but you're just carrying the throne around now, asked Revolver <laughs> Rock. There you go. Throne gone. Okay. Pick a letter, Johnny. Um M. Ben. I'm already here. Um M. Uh Medea. The cunning. Medea. Medea the Cunning. That's what we're going to call them. Oh, yeah. That sounds great. Dennis Gunther says, but how are we all going to sit comfortably? I don't think we are if we're sitting on a throne of broken shields. <laughs> okay. Right. I'm going to describe Medea, and then you can write your prompt. Uh, Medea is... You... Well, I'll tell you what. Chat, give us some descriptors. What's Medea like? Go on, chat. Make a Medea. Johnny, that was... Come on, that was a good joke. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I was... Sorry. Make Medea. I get it. I get it now. Sorry. Scrawny, spunky, and scary are the first three that I've seen. I'm going to go for that then. Spunky, scrawny, scared attention. <laughs> Sivers down your spine. Scrawny, spunky, and scary. Uh, black eyes like the night sky, says Kieran. Ooh. Num, 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 num. Right. What does Medea take from us? Uh, or why does she take the, the throne from us? Um, yes, chat. What skill do we 
do we gain in return? <laughs> multi Medea art. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Titan Uranus. <laughs> Oh, it's a Watson. She, she, no, she, she's looking at me like, why would I get out there? Your laps are a bitch. <laughs> she's camera Come shy. Here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Up here. Yes. Good girl. Yes. There we go. Are you a Greek vampire? <laughs> are you? <laughs> You're a lovely Greek vampire. Right. Okay. So... Oh, Kayla F says she's a con artist. She usurps your <gasps> throne but leaves you with the skills of a lover. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that is extremely Greek. There you go, lover skill. <laughs> go ahead, write it, Johnny. <laughs> oh, sorry. Come on. It's just like writing sex cards. It's going to be funny. <laughs> so where's this going again? Uh, well, we need to make a new experience, so pick oh. a memory. I guess probably one, to be honest. This yeah. is all about us and our position, so we've had our throne stolen from us. I'm, gu I'm guessing it's more of a, uh, a met metaphorical sense. Is she leading our crew now? Oh. oh hello. What do you reckon? Yes. Okay. I did, I, there are I feel like there are in jokes happening in the chat that I do not understand. Dear. Shango on gain says Medea gave you the best night until you passed out and then pushed your limped body for the throne. <laughs> wow. No, she um, wouldn't Medea in your fares. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, 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 okay. Um, we can do this. Let's see. Veronica says, uh, make her leave a violet on the pillow as she disappears after a sexy night as a symbol of women loving women. Okay, so wait, is Medea, is Medea leading the crew now? It's like, she's stolen our... But she's, uh, the throne, are we talking as in, like, a symbol of our authority? Yeah, all the, she now leading the crew? it's up to us, really, isn't it? Okay, great. Um... The writing has begun, chat. The writing has begun. In the meantime, I'll find out our new prompt so that we are ready. We're just going one forward. Just put a one. Just put a one. Uh, oh, Christ, what's the name of that? Hang on. Ear? No, I think they still call them ears. <laughs> <It's increased. laughs> sexy, sexy Medea, being all sexy and stealing the uh, throne, no. says Veronica. <laughs> I'm just imagining Medea wearing like a toga and saying, feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> Think, to be honest, um, we should probably say that we've lost our crew rather than our. Uh, oh our yeah. At this point, because that seems to be where we've gone with this. Yeah. Um... We have a super chat here from Titan Uranus, as Johnny calls him. Uh, the throne has was just a metaphor for sitting down, an activity her lovemaking has robbed you of. <laughs> That's quite graphic, Titan. <laughs> I thought my crew to be base and vile creatures, but I little realised how fickle they were. 
Even while Medea made me sore as Helios crosses the celestial dome, so she poured honeyed words into Dullard's ears. They serve her slavishly. I would be disgusted if I did not find myself doing the very same. Ooh. Poetry, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready for our next prompt? Here we go. Uh, yes, I should think so. You develop a system. Wait, do you not know about sex cop? No, I have no idea what sex cop is. Is this a thing okay, you've done you or is this stuff. a funny thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you about sex cop later. <laughs> you de- After this prompt, I'll tell you about Got sex it. cop. You develop a system for feeding. What is it? What happens to those who die? Create a skill that reflects this. Huh. Andrew Catsby says, why am I getting Zap Brannigan vibes from this? <laughs> my sexy, sexy group. Generations of this sickly family pour in to join my ranks. <laughs> um, Write that down, Kip. <laughs> okay, so, uh, sex cop. My, when my wife was at university, um, she discovered that one of her course mates was writing erotica to sell on the Amazon Kindle store because it's actually a pretty good way of making oh, money. Yes. And they found it while having a study session on his laptop and they sort of all read it out to each other and they had a good giggle. And then she came home and told me about this. And I was like, I could do that. I could do that easy. It will be a procedural crime drama with sex in it. And the protagonist will be called uh, Sex Cop. And I never wrote any of it down, obviously, but I kept narrating sex cop at her <laughs> at like random moments. Like we'd be going to sleep and I'd be like, sex cop walked into the, the interrogation room. Sex cop. <laughs> uh, I'm here to ask you some questions, he said. She said is one of the questions to take off my clothes because I will. And it was like deliberately that bad. Um, but it went on and on and on. And then I told Aoife about this once. And then it became a meme with us. Oh, Lord. And then at one point when we played Bloodborne through, we accidentally skipped a chunk of the game. So we had to go back to my original Bloodborne character, who was called Sex Cop, which <laughs> then made it worse. And now we're here again. Um, so uh, Pietro P has done at three yeah, super chats. Blimey. Brackets. I don't understand the logic behind the character limit. So this is a three parter. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Pietro. Super Chats are strange and confusing. Hey, Johnny and Wheels. Glad I could catch this stream, even though I have no idea what's going on. We'll catch you up in a minute. Two out of three. I wanted to express my appreciation for everything you, the DB team, and the fine people at Oxbox, Oxtra, and EG do to keep me and a lot more people sane. You help many more people than you can imagine just by being the wonderful people you are. Glad to see you're feeling better, Johnny. Glad to see your buy energy as strong as ever, Wheels. (laughs) Thank you very much, Pietro. That's a really lovely thing. That was very, very nice of you. Thank you. Um, um, to catch you up, we are playing yeah. Thousand Year Old Vampire. We're here at the hour mark. Uh, we're playing Thousand Year Old Vampire. This is a solo journaling RPG that you can play as a group, but you're essentially all controlling the same character and the story that lays out for them. Um, you pick a period of history um, and a place in the world. You make a character. You make the the people that they have fragile allegiances with, the immortal that curse them with unlife, and you just go through prompts and prompts and prompts just telling the story of this character together so we're doing it with you the chat you get to tell us what's going on you get to make vital decisions for us uh, as we go through all for the example prompts. right now what are they meant to be deciding so right on? now because all they're doing is talking about sex right, cop who i did kill by mistake right now we'll, we'll gloss over. Uh, we have developed a system for feeding what is it what happens to those who die and then create a skill that reflects this so we're going to get a new skill for ourselves and then um i'm going to have to write down how we do this thing I am tempted. Okay. Don't don't feel like you have to use this chat, but I'm tempted to expand memory three. Um, I think our skill at getting people drunk helps us to uh, make them pass out. We chuck them in the boat. <laughs> I like it. So let me know what you think about that. We've got a lot of skills here. We haven't really checked many of them. Oh, we should have checked. Um, oh, we should have checked captain of the ship, I believe. So I'm, I'm okay. going to put an, an X next to that one. So you can only check a skill once, um, and it will be referenced differently as a skill that has been checked, for example. Um, but we can no longer use our position as the captain of the ship to, to sway things, basically. Okay. Riley says Dionysian Temple, as in Dionysus, sorry. Dionysian Temple? I'm not sure how you say the... Dionysian, yeah. yeah. Booze them, then lose them, says Titan. Get them drunk. Yeah, Uranus. they like it. 
Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, let's call this skill Prophet of Dionysus. There are a yep, lot of people in the chat who thinking. should really read The Secret History by Donatard. Just trust me. <laughs> Long old book, but worth it. Right. Okay. Is Bacchus slash Dionysus the Roman slash Greek split? Yes, yes, Dionysus is Bacchus. Yeah, we've referenced both of them, which is very handy of us. <laughs> oh. Yes. Okay. We could call ourselves Dionysian if that helps. <laughs> or Dionysian. No, we've done it now. Okay, so uh right, I'm gonna I'm gonna write memory uh three prompt two, so you crack on with, with whatever you want to say to the chat, Johnny. Okay. Uh Titan Uranus says Donatart. I think it's T A R D T Donatart. Uh T A R T T. Uh The Secret History is a very, 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 very good book. Um, let's see. I keep closing the, not closing the tab, but minimizing the tab. <sighs> I really, I mean, obviously, part of the reason Wheels um, picked this setting is uh, because he's thinking about Aegon by uh, uh, John Harper, and but also he's <laughs> playing a lot of uh, of Hades. So am I. Uh, I love Dionysus for the abilities, like inflicting hangover and really damaging enemies. That's brilliant. But I really wish he didn't sound like such a Tory. Oh, no, I love his voice. But... His voice is exactly what I would expect Dionysus to actually sound like. Yeah, Zach, um, gotta get you a, a nice Zach. glass of wine, my friend. Welcome, join yeah, the party, friend. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got to get you a glass He's got here. two polo shirts on with like the one colour popped and the other down. <laughs> Just, I grew up in, around enough people like that that I'm like, no, absolutely not. No, I love him. He's great. Okay. okay. Um... Is Sex Cop now owned by Dicebreaker? <laughs> asked Kiwi Frutona. Not on your life. Sex Cop's the, my IP. He's a dude, bro. He doesn't sound like a stoner. Eh. Dionysus sounds like a frat party, bro, and that's exactly what he should yeah. be. Yeah, fair, fair enough. <laughs> Dionysus in Hades is a total himbo. <laughs> I mean, that is exactly fair. But the thing is, I, I, I've got a confession to make. I am absolutely slinging nectar at Meg. Oh God! Like, yeah. I know, I know that you know that makes me very obvious because she's like that. I'm so troubled. She's uh, incredible. Shit, Let's blah, not blah, blah. beat around the okay, bush. Okay, the lead. She is absolutely absolutely incredible <laughs> my god it's, it's reached the point now that when i do fight her it it takes on a weird free song where i'm like oh this is a bit this is weirdly intimate yeah, that is. we're fighting to the mm -hmm. death it's amazing if you own it are you really allowed to talk about sex cop johnny yes because i'm not selling <laughs> sex cop Sex Cop Let's is a non-for-profit organisation. Come back in two weeks when we'll be streaming. We'll just be reading out the contract that we signed when <laughs> we joined the... Uh, we will not be uh, talking about Juicy in this in this stream before before it gets heated. Uh, Johnny, would you like to... Stiga says, my, my aforementioned classicist girlfriend walked in and looked suitably horrified by this entire stream. <laughs> Good. Uh, would I like to watch Would you it? like to read out the prompt I've written? Uh, mm. Memory 3, bullet point 2. I and then once you've done that, give us a roll and we'll see where we go next. All right. Our ship becomes a mobile temple to the god of wine and revelry, Dionysus. Oh, the, the god of wine and revelry, comma Dionysus. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Our ship becomes a mobile temple to the god of wine and revelry, Dionysus. Passengers board from all over the archipelago to drink from our cups, and in return, we drink from them. <laughs> Delightful. Give us a roll then, Johnny. All right. Oh, God, I got, I got a little chill from that. <laughs> I was also thinking how how much more explicit you could have made that by changing them to theirs, but um, we'll uh, skip over that. Seven. Seven. We are now on 16 again, which I believe we've already gone to. Yeah. Oh, which means we're going to further this prompt. Oh. So, this is the first time this happens, so I'll explain how this works. This is yes, please. page 16, you'll see, has multiple prompts. We've only read the top one, but because we're coming here again, we have to now read the second one, oh. and it's going to be uh, a further exploration of the same thing. So to remind oh, everyone, wow. prompt 16 was some mortals have banded together to hunt you well-armed and wise to your tricks. 
which means that our uh, our hunter, um, oh. Vasilis, is back. Oh no! The hunters are persistent, capable, and well informed. They know things about you that you don't. Create a mark that is revealed in a confrontation. You are driven into hiding in an unpeopled wasteland. Lose any stationary resources. Learn a new skill related to this desolate region. And what new name comes to you in loneliness? Bloody hell. That's huge. That's a really good prompt. That is. That's great. Even Matthew Brennan Gittins sent asks, a super chat that says, Wheels, can you also oh. write a book too, please? <laughs> yeah. We'll get on that. Uh, Matthew Gittins says, where can we get this game? My sister would love this. You can get it from itch.io, I believe. Yes. Um, so if you type that in, the link in the there are lots, lots and lots and lots and lots of games on there. Uh, video games, RPGs, all sorts of things. Um, so yes. Uh yeah, have, have a good look on itch.io. You can find Thousand Year Old Vampire. You can find lots of things. Just put in some names. Some of them might surprise you. <laughs> if you were to search names of people, just people you can think of, doesn't matter where you know them Johnny. from. Johnny, <laughs> are you stalling on this prompt because it's such a big one? No. <laughs> I was playing fast and loose with an HR warning. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Right, sorry, I've just picked Read up me the prompt. Joke. Sorry, can you give me the prompt again? Because I'm scared. Okay. I am scared. The hunters are persistent, capable, and well-informed. They know things about you that you don't. So the first thing we have to do, create a mark that is revealed in a confrontation. And a mark, to just remind everyone, we've already got one, which is our half-severed arm that keeps trying to grow back. Uh, It is a visible wound upon us that reveals us to not be human, if people were to figure it out. Okay. Okay. Got it. So uh, uh, the chat's dealing with the mark? Is yeah, right? chat. What kind of mark would they reveal about us that we didn't even realise we had, remember? Didn't even realise we had it. He points at the wings on my back and goes, What are those? <laughs> what? what? Nothing. Are those? <laughs> he points at my crap sandals and says, What are those? <laughs> Learn survival skills, get fangs, says Alex Starslayer. <laughs> Weird eyes. We've already got weird yeah, eyes. We've Upside got down eyes eyelids. Already. A burn scar that is sentient and moves occasionally. Oh my god. Schleps, bleps. My goodness. Six nipples, says Brawny Hunter. <laughs> the pool is abstract. Has done a super chat saying only just joining the stream, so watching from the start. Isadora is also the name of my naive and cheery half elf necromancer Aww. who I'm playing in an upcoming actual play podcast. Jinx. Nice. Wait, do we have to wait an hour now for the pool is abstract to catch up and stay on there? <laughs> um, a batty disposition, a reflection, dusty blood. Oh, dusty blood is cool though. Dusty blood is great. I like dusty blood. A scar that drains when hunters are near. You've always sort of smelled, but never realised. <laughs> I'm I'm up for either a sentient, basically a sentient burn or I do dusty blood. I'd really like that um that one that you just read before the uh, the scar that that weeps when hunters are nearby, almost like sting, um, where it glows blue. Yeah, a scar that drains wine. Oh, that drains wine Ooh, when hunters are near. That's cool. Where, yeah. Where's the scar, Johnny? It's got to be. It's got to be on our face. Our throat. Oh! Ah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. It feels like, um, I don't know if you've seen Vampires vs. the Bronx, but no. uh, they use balloons filled with holy water as like vampire detectors because <laughs> uh, holy water like boils when vampires are close. Blood is scabs. Scabs is blood. Riley, please. <laughs> okay. Wait, when it opens. Okay. And I, they obviously the um, Vasilis 
it's assumed that Vasilis is the one who gave us this mark, right? Uh, yeah, maybe it was like a scar we got when we fought him first. And now whenever he comes near, it yeah. bleeds wine. <laughs> yeah. Which is incredible. Okay, so wait, did Vasilis give us the scar the last time we met him, or is he giving it to us in this memory? No, so he notices the mark. Oh. So he gave us the scar, and because he comes right. close, the wine pours from it. He notices that and says, oh, look, yep. evil sorceress. Um, okay. Yeah. So get right in that prompt. Okay. <laughs> I typed scar, it's not scar. <laughs> Very funny for people who enjoy uh, television inputs. <laughs> How good is this game, though? I know, it's brilliant. Now, bear in mind... No, sorry, before you carry on with this prompt, bear in mind that there's more to it. Um, okay. So, create a mark that is revealed in a confrontation. You are driven into hiding in an unpeopled wasteland. We lose any stationary resources, learn a new skill related to this desolate region, and what new name comes to you in loneliness? Bloody hell. I'm gonna okay. do some like translating in the background here. Um, okay. Problem is, Greek's quite hard to say, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm nomad. Ooh. Ah, yeah, no, that works. That works. The name that we have come to know in this new place of ours, Johnny. Uh -huh. The name that we have come to know for ourselves in this new wasteland. Yeah. Right? Nomas, which is Greek for nomad. Uh -huh. Or oh, Spanish for no more. <laughs> <laughs> no more, por favor. <laughs> Hello. For anyone who's just tuning in, we've got a few people, it seems. Uh, we are playing Thousand Year Old Vampire, the solo journaling RPG, where you, in this case, are the vampire. Um, we are going to be explaining quite a lot if we go for all that's happened but yeah. suffice it to say we are an ancient greek pirate who is catastrophically bisexual um has gotten into all kinds of scrapes and scraps and has been forced out into a desolate people free wasteland uh by a horrible hunter uh -huh. called vesimilas or vesilis sorry not vesimilas Oh, right. Dan Kelleher says, so do you turn others into vampires by getting them to drink your throat wine? <laughs> That's quite an idea. Um, Eleanor Smith says, we lose everything, but we can let our arm grow back. <laughs> I propose our new name is Johnny Two Arms. <laughs> Johnny Two Arms. <laughs> Jay Primo says, new skill, ability to astral project inner thoughts and have a conversation with forgotten memories and parts of your past which are key to keeping scraps of your sanity oh. intact. Um. Oh. Um. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, someone just gave me a great idea. Um. Ooh. I'm going to start reading the first bit whilst you're doing this. Wine swells to the surface of the scar at my throat when Vasilis draws near cascading down my chest to greet the one who marked me. It pools in the dust of the marketplace, staining my feet even as I turn to flee the polymark and his angry mob. The hold of this ship is cool and damp, yet it does little to cool the shame of its most wretched stowaway. Needs a different word than cool. It does li little to assuage. Ooh, assuage. Mm, assuage is more for guilt. Uh, does little to ease. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, you're now in a peopleless wasteland. How 
You're going to have to get the animals drunk. Oh, yeah, we're on a ship, but it's a peopleless wasteland. Ah! Well, have we been forced to abandon our crew and sail off into literally the middle I think of the ocean? I think we've stowed away on the ship and we're heading somewhere. Yeah. Ooh, quell is good. Well done, Daniel Whitten. Quell. Quell. Quell, quell, quell. quell, quell. What do we have here, then? <laughs> the Phantom says Canada or Australia. Yeah, well, we're going somewhere new, got... right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was relatively uninhabited in the 1100 BC era? Or right, it's probably more like, I don't know, 900 BC at this point. Yeah. I don't know, let's find out. Overall, the ship is dead from plague or something, says Calrith. Siberia, says Ronnie. Siberia. Groydon, says Groydon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How about any up further north? Scandinavia, Newfoundland, Greenland. I mean, th at this point, like... Newfoundland isn't a terrible idea. Yeah. Get a bit Viking with this. Oh. That'd be interesting. You're on a Viking ship headed to Canada. Well, if we stick around Newfoundland long enough, then I'd get to write about whaling. <laughs> <laughs> Iceland, it was literally brand new, says Titan. Hatchinoff says Stoke Uranus. on Trent. <laughs> oh, great. Great. Have a oh, look. Vampire, yeah. <laughs> Have a look at this vampire over here. Um, I was doing more stuff by. Anyway. Okay, new prompt then. You gonna roll some dice. Ute Scoot has to go uh, do their day, have fun drinking blood and seducing people and being edgy. We will. Oh, we've learned so a new we... skill in this desolate region. So we say. Uh, oh, yeah. So we can, like, fight the cold maybe or something like that. Like, because uh, it's going to be freezing for us if we're Mediterranean. Yeah. Hartley pulls as <laughs> Incredible. Um, we've got a lot of skills. Uh, let's say. Yeah. Oh, farming says Aiden Folks. Farming. I. I mean, you know, I've already already said that you can expect two things from me: sadness and m dashes. Uh, I want to say ratting because that's what we had to live off on the ship. Okay, ratting it is then. It's a staple, to be fair, of uh, vampire fiction. People like Alex Starslayer saying useful things like survival. <laughs> <laughs> no way, my No, friend. eating rats. <laughs> well, he's eating rats here on this stream. Right, okay. Let's... Oh, I forgot Alex being the Duchess from Spinebreaker is from Stoke-on-Trent. Thank you for oh, that, Jenny yeah. Cox. Not that you'd know it to listen to. No. <laughs> I suppose you can sound posh wherever you're from, right? Um, yeah, we're a Nosferati, says Rob Rock. Okay, so give us another dice roll, Johnny, and let's get a new prompt. Okay. That is minus one. Minus one, 15. Yep. Uh, I'm going to let you read this out, and I just need to step away for 20 seconds. Okay. I'll be right back. All right, chat. Well, this one goes out to you then. While traveling, you come into conflict with another mortal. Gain a mark. Oh god, we've got another mark. Who are they? What trick did you play upon them? And then create a new immortal character. Oh, with another immortal. Sorry, not another mortal. Jeez. Okay, it's time for Varking. It's Varking? Vikings. Uh, Lionel L gives us a super chat that says, uh, Newfoundland is all about the cod and the screech bees. <laughs> Oh my god, it's all about cod, is it? It's cod time. I don't know how much blood cod has. All right, it's time for a Viking vampire. That's what that's what we've uh, established here. Um, Viking vampire. Let's. All right. Well, it's time to to change our resources here. I no longer need ancient Greek names, but I need Viking ones instead. Viking names. Let's see. Uh, how about Tove? Anyone who's watched any of my personal streams will know that one. Tove. We're going with that. So we have a new immortal by the name of Tove. Tove. And she is... Um, this was whilst we were traveling. So I think this is before we ended up at... Uh, uh, before we ended up at Newfoundland. So I'm going to say that perhaps the captain of the ship. I think if you run, a, if you own a ship in this 
in this fiction. Right, Johnny, if you own a ship in this in this fiction we've made, then you are a vampire. That's what we've associated with with vampires. Okay, good. Um, which okay. means that well, the uh, Scandinavian. Uh, go on, go on, Watson. Come we on. can do it. There we go. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait. Okay. Good girl. So good. Right. Right. Her name is Tuve or Tove. Um, she was the captain of the ship that we stowed away upon. Um, I so I saw somebody in chat say that we they branded us uh, as a thief and stowaway. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so let, let's just say this is the captain of the long ship that. Um, defying all human logic sailed the very seas of the earth um, so I think we need some more space here we might have to just resign Sappho to a diary because she's kind of gone now as yeah. much as I love her she's gone yeah so, Sappho, you have entered our diary. <gasps> oh! Veronica Matrix says, permanently frostbitten hand as you don't have any blood flow or ability to warm up for a mark as they've kept your hand in the ice cold water as punishment. Oh. Well, we've already, we're already missing one hand, so if the other one yeah. is out of action as well, we're becoming a bit crap. All we can do is bite. <laughs> Hey, biting and kicking. <laughs> the like horses horses have been getting by with those two things for centuries. <laughs> Hats off to the horses. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Right, I'm writing the prompt. Feel free to fill the air, Johnny. Okay. Um what's everyone saying? Maybe a leg instead? No, Ian K. Anderson. It's hand or nothing. Um, lots of people wondering if the Sappho in our story is the actual Sappho Sappho. No, it's not the actual Sappho Sappho. It's a namesake. Good to know. Wow. There are some... The chats, in fairness, really got into this. And there's some... There's some grim stuff coming out of the woodwork. I keep writing it as us rather than I and me. <laughs> Aww. She blood eagled you. Oh, no. God, that's also, quite grim. <laughs> also, didn't the blood the blood eagle wasn't actually a thing, was it? Like they don't reckon it was a thing. Oh, I don't know. Oh, but I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I'm I'm so sick of historians <laughs> ruining history. <laughs> There is debate about whether the Blood Eagle was historically practiced or whether it was a literary device invented by the authors who transcribed the sagas. Look. No contemporary accounts of the right exist, and scant references in the sagas are several hundred years after the Christianization of Scandinavia. Johnny, stop so, ruining my day. Why would you tell me that? Because, like, Christian narrative retelling sort of change things around a lot. It's the same with Beowulf. Yeah, but I will always believe the myth, because the myth is way cooler. <laughs> Yeah. That's such a That's boring what's... way to live your life, to just be like, oh, actually, none of this ever happened, and it was all very dull. <laughs> oh, <gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Well, sorry. It's like oh. the, um, one of my favourite history tidbits is the whole, like, Ooh, English bowman that? would lift up the two fingers to say, I've still got the two things. And it's like, oh, yeah. that never actually happened. It's like, I don't care, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing cooler than knocking over your drink, mm. though. That's pretty cool, right? Because I just very much did that. Damn it. Well, now I'm going to have to mop the floor. Stupid Johnny. Wow, Wheels really nailed Johnny's voice. <laughs> I wasn't imitating Johnny. Um, I was imitating well, history fans, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Titan, Uranus, absolutely thought that you were. <laughs> so there we go. You don't need to do F for the beer. It's a 2.8% stubby of French lager from a uh, 
from a supermarket. I really wouldn't worry. It cost 30 pence. Johnny will need Moppet and Buck, says Ariel Gonzalez. Absolutely huge. Immense. Get a hook hand. 2.8%. Oh, God, that is low, says Jeremy Siegel. But that's the point. Why are you drinking it then? Because you can have several of them and you don't... It doesn't even... Yeah, it's a work beer. Doesn't, doesn't even touch the sides. 30 pence. Did you buy it from the past? No. You can, I'm disappointed in your alcohol choice. Get away. <laughs> Come on. Right. The thing is, these little, these little suckers, you get 10 continental lagers <laughs> for three quid. And you know what? They're brilliant. And James Levy puts it well. Sometimes you just want a lot of beer and not a lot of drunk. I just, I like them. I, I realised that I, I don't actually enjoy being drunk as much as I used to. Uh, but I really enjoy having a drink. So this is kind of perfect. Like, I've not, I've done your hangovers. I don't really get that pissed. It's nice. So there. Man up, Johnny, and drink proper beer. That is not a good attitude to take. I'm going to, I am going to do me. Because, you know, I could drink something higher ABV. But I don't have to. And I'm happy drinking this. I like it. Hmm. Num, num, num. Hmm. Right, cool. Hmm. I've probably spelled some of that wrong, but there we go. Ready for you. Underneath memory <laughs> two. Sorry, the phantom says, yeah, be a blackout drunk, Johnny. <laughs> <sighs> right. Sorry, carry on. Where, where am I meant memory to Memory two, please. Uh, memory two. I'm 120% for weak beer. I am 100%, 50% not for 35 pence beer. Listen, no pun included. I respect you, <laughs> and you have a great channel, and you do brilliant content about board games. But, however, <laughs> I, I will, I will. This is the hill I've decided to die on, and it's a 30p stubby of beer continental <laughs> french line beer continental <laughs> i for brennan uh, says honestly i'd try that beer exactly. in a uh, Shout out to in a super chat look i'm drinking responsibly am i drinking deliciously no but am i comfortable nonetheless yes <laughs> so anyway right here we go tove finds me stowing away on her ship and her punishment is as cruel and unforgiving as the icy waters that she locks my hand under. The skin begins to crack, blacken and break, but does not drop off as Tobe expects. With this, we share a knowing silence between ourselves under the open skies and piercing light of the northern stars before she deserts me on some wretched plane. Bloody hell! That's great. <laughs> it's like a, let's have a look at your hand then. Oh. Oh, I That's see. That's wonderful. <laughs> um, oh, oh, yes, this is a good super chat. John Falster says, pedantry, 1100 BCE is Helladic, not Grecian. <laughs> that is exactly the kind of attitude I've not tried to foster on this channel. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Incredible. <laughs> By the way, we've got 400 concurrent viewers watching. Um, hey! Absolutely wonderful to see all you joining us. We're having a great time. Um, yeah. This game is fantastic. Uh, well, I'll pop another link in the chat in case you're interested. Uh, this is Thousand Year Old Vampire by Tim Hutchings. Thank you so much to everyone um, who has been joining in with the prompts. And it's time for another one. So let me roll the dice. We've got about half an hour left. Um, oh, we're actually going to go minus three here. We've had some low rolls. Mm. So we're actually. Did you say it's single player? Says Lionel L. Can be yeah. like yes. It's it's, but it can it's also designed be for solo play, but you can play it as a group, just telling a story essentially. Uh, so we yeah. go down to prompt twelve, which I don't believe we've seen before. Okay. Come on. There we go. Right. So we must have escaped Newfoundland because Johnny. Okay. New laws or social mores make it harder for you to hide among the populace. How are you nearly caught and destroyed? Check a skill, create a skill, 
and then create a mortal criminal who assists you. What? <laughs> there are 6,703 community copies left. Of, Holy crap. Of Thousand Year Old Vampire. That is a, incredible. A community copy for anyone who doesn't know is a copy you buy for somebody who may not have the means to. Um, and they can download it for them. So right? I think how this works is um, basically whenever you buy a copy, it makes a free copy for someone who can't afford it themselves. Yeah, but that would necess- that would technically mean that after all the like public attention that's been getting recently from us and Sharpens Down and all kinds of people who've been talking about it, deservedly so, I think a lot of people have been buying the game. So if you are if you are a bit uh, low on cash right now and you're you know desperate to play the game but really can't afford it, that's exactly what those copies are for. So do not hesitate. Do not hesitate. What that's game. brilliant. Okay. Right. So. Um, we have escaped Newfoundland. Then let's just start off with that. Okay. I guess we can just expand prompt two here, or memory two rather. Yeah. So where have we gone? Okay. Where the have first we... question? Yeah. Modern day Sweden. How how modern day are we talking? No, no, no. As in like what we would call oh. today Sweden, but. Oh, I see. Okay. Norse Norse land. Let's see what Sweden looked like in. The year 800 BC. (laughs) Yep. While you do that, um, Shango Unchained is asking for a repeat of the mark. Uh, The mark is uh, a permanently frostbitten hand that never seems to heal or drop from my body. Dennis Gunther Um, says, do not go to Denmark. Beer is too expensive there. (laughs) I'm not being baited any longer. A lot of people would like Sweden, so it's the year 800 right. in Sweden, BC. Okay. Uh, so, 800 BC Sweden. Of course, I studied this in school. <laughs> <laughs> the history of Sweden. Sweden's pretty. Oh God. Now. Uh, um... Swedish prehistory ends around 800 AD. So yes, I did the exact same Google. <laughs> so in that case, <laughs> what's in? Huh. So unless we spend a long old time. Well, Hannah Alexson says actual Swede here. Christianity was just ready to kick off here, which meant a lot less tolerance to everything superstitious. Which is exactly what I was thinking. Mm. Is like Christianity is is there. But that would that would be um, a long old jump. Yeah. Okay. Um. Or if we like, we can roll again if it's seeming a bit uh, difficult to piece. Oriol says you could yes. just say it's a generic Scandinavian land. <laughs> we don't really know where we are, to be fair. Like as a character, we have no idea where we are, what's going on, or who these people are. Hmm. Rome is being mooted. Mm. Yeah, I mean it's it only takes a change of the of the character name who punished us. Done. Yep. Done 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 done. So let's say um Ooh, here's an idea. Go on. So it said people this wasteland, right? Mm-hmm. When was the invasion of Gaul? Because it might Ooh. might not have always been peopleless, but after a massive war, maybe it's like Gallic Wars, fifty eight BC to fifty BC. That, that's a lot, culminating in the decisive Battle of Alesia in fifty two BC. That's a lot more manageable. We'll probably have to kill off all of our human uh, characters, but we don't really we're not okay. going to see them ever again anyway. So, bye, mortals. <laughs> What's in here? Sorry, mortals. At least we've escaped uh, Vasilis. <laughs> yeah, true. Okay. I think we've probably lost our uh, our ship and throne as well, to be honest. Yes. We stowed away on a ship. Right. Now, indomitable Gaul. <laughs> Hatronos says, okay, wheels are our Martin. <laughs> we are going to have to kill all of them. <laughs> uh, what about Troy? Says Ian K. Sanderson. Nah. 
Okay. Right, let's just change Tuva's name to a Roman name then. Yep. Uh, Roman names. Give me a letter, Johnny. Uh, <laughs> Here at babycenter.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, it's got pictures of babies next to all the names. <laughs> Asterix Novel X confirmed, says Ronnie. Yes. Can't wait to see fully automatics, the blacksmith. Johnny, give me a, give me a letter quick. There's so many babies oh, on the stream god. right C, now. C, 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 C. C, uh, Cicero. Cicero. Amazing. <laughs> Dunzo. Yeah, gross, Veronica. Exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Quick little edit there, and we're back on form. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Angel Beat says, oh no, Cicero! <laughs> okay. So, to remind ourselves of the prompt. Yes. New laws or social mores make it harder for you to hide among the populace. How are you nearly caught and destroyed? Check a skill, create a skill, and then create a mortal criminal who assists you. If we're in the middle of a big war, perhaps they tried yeah. to enlist us. Or conscript us. Whatever the word is. Into the yeah. Legion. But okay. we were like, uh, <laughs> they just show up both of our hands. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as they try and or... see if we're faking it, maybe, we have to enlist the help of a criminal to escape Mm. up to you though it's your problem got a different idea got a different idea uh okay where am i writing this well Sorry, uh, which... pick a memory or we have to get rid of one. Oh yeah okay we've got space for two more memories in our in our diary okay i think we can probably nest this under four right yeah do it um okay <clears throat> well actually maybe maybe it should be under the cicero memory because this is our, oh, us yeah. emerging in a new land right so number two. Oh, of course yeah, yeah. okay some wretched plane whilst we're writing that hannah axelson says is cicero a murderous jester no. <laughs> um, the only Dark Brotherhood we have time for here is the Oblivion Dark Brotherhood. Thank you very much. Um, Ifa says, poor, poor Cicero. Can't get his mother to hear her new pressing plans. <laughs> Jenny Cox says, have a bad reaction to magic potion? Titan Uranus says, the real Cicero was alive and active during Caesar's Gallic Wars. So, Well, look, I'm sure there was more than one person with the same name in ancient Rome. It's quite a big place. No. No. Legion... Um... Joel says gloves are deemed illegal as a notorious gang uses a hand tattoo to identify themselves. That's very cool. Ooh. Oh! Johnny, we've had an incredible suggestion here. Shango on. Gain says uh, make the plane, the barren plane, Pompeii. Yeah, I saw that. That's... The dates are going to get a little messy, we'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, but I was just thinking, like, isn't the thing it's harder to live among them now? Yeah, but we, we then, we spent time in there. doesn't mean that we're there now. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yes. I see. So it's not like we're among the survivors from Pompeii. No, 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 we're, we're amongst and... the rubble of Pompeii and then find civilization again as part of the Roman Empire. Ah, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Um... Lucian would be proud of all of you, says Ignis. <laughs> uh, Ignis, if we can call a character Lucian Lachance, I will, I will do my best. <laughs> what about the frostbite? Seas are still cold. Trust me. Middle of the night. A wintry uh, day in the middle of the sea. It's going to be cold. Don't worry about it. Middle of the ocean. Jenny Cox says, Pompeii was destroyed in 79 AD, but Vesuvius is actually incredibly fertile when it's not erupting. 
little tidbit there. Yes, this is true. Um... Sorry. Uh... Skills Loading says, well, my shift is about to start. I'm loving this Let's Play, but need to make money to buy myself a copy. It's a very, very good RPG. I do recommend it. Like I said before, if you go on Twitch.io uh, on the link that we popped in, I'll just grab it for you again. Um, bear in mind that... Uh, uh, there are community copies available for those of you who are maybe in a bit of a financially hard time um, or if you're from a particularly marginalized community where you don't have the, the luxury of being able to spend money on things like this kind of thing. That's what those community copies are there for. Don't feel bad for claiming one. That That's what I've always seen creators of these games say. Like, do not feel bad for claiming one if that's what you need to do. If that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. That's why they're there. So give it, give it a thought. But if you do have the money to spare, obviously... Send some cash over to Tim Hutchings because this game is incredible. It's fantastic. We're having a great time. Veronica says, are you guys going to make this a two-parter in two weeks' time if we don't reach a satisfying endpoint today? I mean, what we might do Ooh. is we might send out the Google Docs so that people can carry on themselves. Or, if Johnny reckons, we could just carry it on, yeah. It would make yeah, it quite confusing see. for anyone um, tuning in to that stream. But we can yes. do a recap. We have it all written down, so... <laughs> Josh says, sorry, but, uh, Dicebreaker, have a good rest of your days. I had to pull off to get a nap. Been on the road since 4-ish a.m. Yeah, I can imagine. Jesus. Fair enough, Please Josh. get some sleep. <laughs> Tom McClavy says, collaborative creativity at its best. Absolutely, Don. Absolutely. I don't know about you lot, but I'm having a great time. I love this game. It's such a cool game. I'm going to start reading the, the start of Johnny's prompt yeah, now. So yeah. Here we go. Emerging unscathed, if not unscarred, from the ashes of Pompeii, I thought I may be looked upon as some kind of miracle, proof that Father Jupiter has love for us still, that hope may spring from the most unlikely places of foolish conceit. Suspicion rains down around my survival like ash fell, choking amongst the cities lost. Very, very good. Oh, give us a roll, Johnny. Alright. Roll them bones. Wasn't too enamored with that one. We've gotten ourselves into a new situation, which is always good. Mathis uh, Dugas says, My girlfriend returned and informed me Cicero means chickpea. That will be a minus two for you. Wow, Mr. we have Ian. not gone far, have we? <laughs> that puts us on prompt 10. Okay, this is interesting, and this might give us a uh, a way of forwarding things a little bit in history, seeing as we're quite far behind. <clears throat> the stars pinwheel above you in the night. The seasons are a blur. You are as an automaton, unconscious of the passage of decades. A century passes. Strike out a memory... Strike out all mortal characters. Um, Can't strike them out if they're already Yeah, dead. I was going to say we forgot to make a criminal, but he's immediately died, so I'm not too worried about oh, yeah. it. <laughs> His name was... Uh, Barrius. Oh, hang on. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Wait a minute. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, shame rains down. Phileas like the Michelius. On the, the city's last... <laughs> Uh, a criminal helps me escape. He dies in the attempt. <laughs> a pity. He was very handsome. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, God. Uh, uh, what was the name you just gave me? Um, Danny Astyrus. <laughs> Danny Astyrus, a criminal. He has... Gone a bed. <laughs> if you know, you know. Just don't go a bed. Um, okay, so we need to strike out a memory and then write a new prompt. Okay. What did uh, we forget? Okay. Bacillus? Uh, uh, or the person who gave us our gift? The Patios? Although we... We should remember the people who are going to stick around and be alive, because I think they'll be useful later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I thought we had to strike out a memory. Yeah. Not a... A memory is a whole collection of things, right? So... Oh, right, memory yeah, four, yeah. for example, is all about Vasilis, and he's dead now. 
Oh, we see Vasilis. Let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's get rid of him, shall we? Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we need to make memory six now because four is gone, but it still stays there. We still remember. Oh, that's yeah, nice. We still remember what happens um, as players, just not as a character. Yep. Okay. So. Um, what I'm actually going to do, though, is I'm going to further the one that you just did. Ooh. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, poop. There we go. That's it. <laughs> Poor, dead, handsome criminal. <laughs> the um, the torrent of abuse from. Um, feel free to read chat whilst I'm doing this. Uh, oh yeah, sure. Uh, 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 uh. He was very handsome. Needs to be on a shirt. I agree, Angel Beat. <laughs> the Phantom says, "Man, this is mostly bad for you." Yep. Yeah. Turns out being a vampire is this ain't Twilight. It's not all that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Ronnie says, "That's how I wish to be remembered: hot and loose with the law." <laughs> dear, oh dear. So we're a hundred years ahead, still Roman Empire time. Yeah. Correct, kilted gamer. Probably like maybe the birth of Christ kind of time. All let's, right. let's say that. Getting into Constantine kind of era. Cool. Han Solo Chewbacca says, not Twilight, you don't say. <laughs> Oh, no. Emma Benton said, when we learned about Pompeii, a kid thought people survived under the ash and that they were living under there when it was unearthed. <laughs> That's very pure and stupid. <laughs> but mostly pure. Do you believe in the myth of the masturbating man in Pompeii? That's probably another one, isn't it, that I can well actually you yeah, about? Yeah, stop, stop mansplaining history to me, Johnny. He wasn't. Why? Bertha why Christ couldn't he years before Pompeii, <laughs> says Jenny Cox. Well, it's just that he, like, the heat causes muscles to contract to put him in that position. Yeah, but I mean, if your hand was attached to your knob, then it doesn't matter where they contract, does it? <laughs> All right, I suppose. Uh, Chris Dillon says he wasn't <laughs> masturbating; he was just tucking shirt. in his shirt. Yeah. Oh. I suppose I can't. I suppose I can't rule it out. <laughs> Schleps, blabs. I'm hiding that one. <laughs> Why? He's right. <laughs> it's always a F off. In caps. <laughs> in caps. Right, okay, I actually need to write now. Hold on. Uh, yes, sorry. Um... <sighs> well, there's a there's a lot of, of masturbating Pompeii man truthers out there. <laughs> he could have been in that position before the heat. Um, yeah, true. Schleps Bleps told me to F off. Seems statistically unlikely that no one was having one last quick one before being incinerated, says Tuesday Forever. Gosh, I, I, who knew that whether or not one of the corpses of Pompeii was jacking it was such a contentious issue? <laughs> Goodness me. I had no idea. I thought I'd kick the hornet's nest when I revealed that I was drinking a weak beer. But, God, oh, to be me half an hour ago. It's getting dark here. I might have to turn a light on in a minute. Perhaps another says 10 times DB chat derailed Johnny. Wow. All right, cool. Go. The final point right. of memory two, which means that one is now full. Blimey. Okay. The torrent of abuse from superstitious citizens forces me into isolation. In my desperation, I crawl among the freshly built sewers and find a nook to slide myself into. It has been hundreds of years since I truly slept, but when I awaken, the very city has changed before my eyes. My name is likely cleared, but how long has it been? Question mark! <laughs> how long has it been? <laughs> Joe's not on board. Ariel Gonzalez says, in this community, we take two things seriously, beer and wanking. <laughs> Alex Starslayer quite um, uh, quite sensibly says, is our arm back? 
Uh, Emma Benson says, again, this was not how I imagined spending my morning, lol, but I'm also not surprised. <laughs> my name is likely um, cleared, but how long has it been? Sorry, what? Where's the bee? There's a bee? Oh, it's a bee! <laughs> <laughs> yes, Veronica! Yes! <laughs> oh, oh wow. I, I, I was going with Arrested Development. Oh, I was going with the vine, sorry. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, big shout out to Veronica um, for getting that one too. 500 year nap in the poo tunnels? Oh, nice. yeah, baby. Yeah, you're right, Brawny Fanta. Okay. We okay. We are going four ahead. We're finally moving forward. Hey, hey. Which means we are on prompt 14. Thank you, Chris Doolin. There we go. Ian Carter says, I'm glad I've joined in late and have joined the madness with little explanation. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Oh. Uh oh. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound good. An enemy character uses a lost resource to turn your few friends against you. Check three skills to regain the resource, or what? check one skill to barely survive. But we don't bloody have any bloody. Well, we'll make some then. resources. Uh, which? Well, doesn't that mean we? Which? I mean, if we don't have any, just yeah, yeah you okay. just make some. It's fine. If you ever don't have something, oh, okay. you, need, you just make one on the spot. Uh, which former friend did you kill? Where do you flee? Interesting. So, what, first of all, what lost resource has been turned against us? Let's have a look at our resources here. I mean, our enthralled crew with servitors of the lineage. But they're, they've been dead for yeah, years. But the lineage, Johnny, as in like oh, the yeah, lineage. All, all of their their children and their children's children that have continued to serve. Oh, who are they serving now? Why, of course, oh, no. it is Medea, Madeira. the cunning. Medea, sorry, not Madeira. That's what's over sugar. Medea has come back. And... Kobe Morris says, oh, good. Nothing like dropping into the middle of an RPG. Have I missed much? <laughs> oh, Kobe. I'm glad Kobe understands. Some people will turn up and be like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's like, yes, I imagine you don't. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. All right, so Medea, the cunning, is... She's turning up to to make things harder for us. Amadea, Amadea says Ian K. Anderson. No. Uh, okay. They found your lost arm, says Jesse Pato. <laughs> it's still alive. Okay, so this is this is going to have to go in one. Okay. I think so. So it's a lost resource that comes back to what? Sorry. Right. Oh no, we don't have space in one, Johnny. You can only have three experiences what? per memory. Oh, it's... Okay. <gasps> Alex Darslay just put up a brilliant idea. Senator um, Medea. Okay. Senator Medea. Okay, so an enemy character uses a lost resource to turn your few friends against you. I mean, we could read that as they used to be our friends, i.e. our servitors. Um, mm -hmm. You can either check three skills to regain the resource... Or check one skill to barely survive. Which former friend did you kill, and where do you flee? <laughs> I'm I'm calling it barely survive. Yeah. I prefer right, that. skill. <laughs> barely survivors. Uh, what skill? What skill? What I mean, skill? 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 There's a few here that could. I mean, there's bloodthirsty, martial discipline, ratting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, I love what, that ratting. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm checking ratting. How do we check oh, ratting? Boy. There you go. Ratting is checked. So bear in mind, that doesn't mean right. that we are no longer able to rat. It just means that we've used that as a resource that we can spend sort of thing. Okay, great. Chat is spamming love. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought about that. It's been like, Medea, do you really want... What about for all Don't time's Don't you remember, <laughs> Veronica huh. says you started a plague. No. Oh, that's a cool idea, though. No, I was thinking of something else. Um, you command the army okay. of rats to attack Madeira. No. <laughs> uh, so is this going to have to go in six? Um, or we have to strike or... something out. There's space in five. Uh, but yeah, it seems like this is going to be a new one, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Can I reference Medea? Obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Okay. 
Do we have anything about her in our memories, though? Yes. In uh, one. In one. That's why I wanted to carry on with one. Ah, uh, okay. So we still do remember who she is, which is good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right, we've got about ten minutes, so we're getting towards okay. the end of our uh, of our section of play here. If you have enjoyed this, and it seems like a lot of you have, because we had about four hundred people watching, which is a great number. Thank you very much for all of you tuning in. Mm. Um, do let us know if you'd like to see a spot a, a part two, a couple of weeks from now. Um, or we could could jog things around, I guess, so that we do double double game, double paint, or something like that, if we wanted to. I know it's a big jump in between uh, two parts. But yeah, we'll think about that. Yeah, chat one part two. <laughs> I saw this coming. <laughs> okay. That would that would put it on the twelfth of November. Not quite spooky anymore, but that's fine. Right. Medea's faithful serve her still. They'd follow her into the wretched halls of Tartarus, if she asked them. She may as well have done, for all the good it did them. Turned loose in the sewers to hunt me down, they fell like so many rats. A ship, a sewer, a rodent, a human. It makes little difference. They all bleed the same. How does a ship bleed? No one cares. <laughs> Metaphysical questions are fine. Keep it going. It bleeds humans. <laughs> All right. Um, where do we flee, Johnny? Um, okay, the prompt is four. Um, so we're going to 18. God, that might be the furthest we've ever been. Knew it. I knew it. How does the ship bleed? You know what I mean? <laughs> Ships and sewers can't bleed, I don't think. <laughs> Hang on. They all bleed the same. Apart from the ships and sewers. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obs. There you go. Wink. Um, so, yeah, where are we fleeing to? Because we barely make it out yeah. alive. So I get, well, now the Roman Empire is really spread, right? So we've got yeah. a few options. We could go to ancient Egypt, for example. It'd be pretty cool. Oh. Um but I'm sure that someone's about to pop up being like, um, if the Romans were there, it's not ancient Egypt. <laughs> but the Romans were ancient. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree, but Carpathia. Kobe Morris says, is Wheels writing a vampire RPG or a Spawn comic? Those lines are very edgy 90s. That was Johnny, thanks very much. <laughs> yeah. Time for Jesus, says Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, we could go to Nazareth. <laughs> we could meet our boy oh, Jesus. <laughs> Egypt, yeah, in all caps there, says Rachel, Rachel Fesperman. Uh, Jenny Cox says Britain, Hadrian's Wall. China, eat Jesus. <laughs> eat, eat Jesus. Now, would we put him immortal or immortal? I guess that's a matter of perspective. <laughs> mm. You'd be about 200 years late, says Jenny Cox. Yep. We could go to, could go to Hadrian's Wall and pick a fight. <laughs> That's history jokes. <laughs> Croydon, it's still funny if I keep saying it right. Dan Kelleher, it is. Go north and bend um, beer, says Alex Nelson. Egypt sounds great. Egypt sounds Egypt is. grand. Well, um, bad news for Egypt then. You've fed too long in one place, destroying a community or social group. Who were they? Oh, good lord. How did the last community member die? Gain a scavenged resource and lose a resource. We don't have any resources. <laughs> uh, what do we gain? Okay. Um... <laughs> See, you'd have eaten Jesus, says Chris Dewan. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. What if? Go on. It says a community, right? Yeah. What if it's the Romans who hold power over Egypt? What if we okay. liberate Egypt from the Roman Empire? That sounds nicer than literally anything else chat is saying. 
Well, Oriol says we get Kill a sick Kill the firefighters tan. of Alexandria, steal scrolls from the library. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Starslayer, you are good value. <laughs> Eat a Roman legion. An entire legion, Jeremy. That's insane. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I can really do with a curry, mm. actually. Should have oh, gone man. to India. Should have gone to India. We slaughtered the Judean people's front, says Django Unchained. <laughs> Judean people's front. <laughs> right, the let's liberate Egypt. Judea. All right, uh, so what scavenge resource did we get then? Uh, well, did we scavenge, like, allies of e- Egypt, you know? War elephant. War elephant. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, like... Egyptian favour. Uh, resources, like, um, Ear of the Pharaoh, yeah, wasn't it? Ear- yeah, Egyptian favour sounds No, I like Year of the Pharaoh. Dennis, okay. Dennis Gunter has done a super chat saying, with the whole COVID thing going on, I'm having trouble with keeping track of time. So thanks for a lovely Saturday night. I hope you'll play Shadows over Camelot sometime. <laughs> Cheers and have a Thank good you, one. Dennis. That really got good me. Good super chat. Good super chatting. That's Ear of the Pharaoh sort of metaphorically, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking figuratively. <laughs> Alexander the Great. Good lord. We'd be so screwed if our community got turned into vampires. There'd be no hope for the humans. It'd be like Daybreakers, but everyone is Sam Neil. Um, Can't see what I'm writing. Um, I have to say, chat, I am really impressed by Wills' composure when he's typing these bits, because when I'm doing it, I get distracted immediately. <laughs> but well, now I'm distracted. It gets, sorry, yeah. It gets to the point where I can say things. I oh, know. Excuse me. Um, doesn't even doesn't even phase him. God. Roughly, what is the date? Such a good question, Schleps Bleps. Don't know. Chris Doolin says Wheels has a lovely history of GMing on stream. He's the man. Thank you. Here we go. Is Jenny Cox says it's two hundred to three hundred AD. That sounds about right to me. Oh god, I'm gonna misspell this. I always do. No, I didn't. Right. There you go. Okay, here comes six point six point two. Yep. I flee to the lands of the Nile, fertile for both crop and flesh. I thrive there, but my greed is, as it ever was, my downfall. Luckily for my chances here, it was the upwind of the people. It was the upwind of the people under Rome's heel, as my culling of their Mediterranean rulers leaves them in a position of great power. This is a very old vampire. You're right, Riley. <laughs> oh, 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 to know the Roman. Uh, it did get dark in my conservatory very quickly, the Queen of Spades. Oh, it also got dark in this story very quickly, to be fair. It did, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah and yeah. it's also uh, looking like the uh, the end of the stream, my friends. I did spell it wrong. Well, I didn't say I did, so what do you want me to do? <laughs> oh, that, uh, I told the door open. <laughs> uh, I come up. <laughs> Oof. Well, that was... Um, that was intense. I that was great fun. It was great fun. I was yeah. I was worried that I was going to just be crying into my keyboard because I, I hate everything I write normally. But uh, that was great. Fun. I think sometimes a little <clears throat> pressure does you well when it comes to writing because it stops you yeah. in your head and you're just like, well, I need to write something. Yeah, yeah. this was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much to everyone who joined us for this stream. Uh, this was Tim Hutchins, yeah. thousand year old vampire. I will for the final time of the stream. Put a link in the chat where you can go grab yourself a copy if you like it. And as I said before, there are an absolute wealth of community copies. If you're not familiar with those, those are copies that are available to those 
who are um, going through a bit of a rough financial time uh, and need a bit of help, maybe can't um, spend as much money on, on the funner things in life. So it's a bit of a, you know, you're welcome, don't worry about it, no questions asked kind of thing. Um, so if you do feel like you're in a position like that yourself, don't feel bad about it, don't feel ashamed. It happens to us all. We've all been in rough times financially, I think. Um, so feel free to grab a copy. But of course, the best one to get if you're a bit more flush, is the physical edition, which, although mm. quite expensive, is absolutely gorgeous. One of the most beautiful books in all of RPG history, um, which you will hear all about in my uh, video on the most beautiful RPG videos of all time here on youtube.com forward slash dicebreaker, the channel you're already watching. Please hit subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified whenever we put a new video live. I've been Wheels. This has been Johnny below me. You might have seen me and in chat who writes for dicebreaker.com and joins us on the channel every now and again. Please go over there and read some of her fantastic articles. Uh, and if you want to support the channel any more, then you can head on over to dicebreaker.myshopify.com. Johnny, I see you. <laughs> it's a good thing the camera's on that bit. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, you can head over there to buy some dice breaker merch thanks very much for watching everybody we will see you on the next stream uh, and look out for the podcast coming out tomorrow have a lovely day and goodbye from both of us and our thousand year old vampire bye. so handsome.